Today, we review the 1988 horror movie, Cellar Dweller. <laughs> That is a comic book artist from the 50s who used a satanic book for creature ideas and accidentally summoned a killer creature into existence and then immediately sets the pages on fire to destroy it. Accidentally setting yourself on fire. Kind of a theme around these parts. Fourth time it's happened in a movie I reviewed. Cue up uh, Death Warmed Up. <laughs> also common among movies I review is having the star be a TV actress. This time is Deborah Ferentino from Eureka. She, 30 years later, wants to recreate the Cellar Dweller comics and goes to the original artist house that's now a writer's commune. She is not very welcome there. This facilities admissions committee has advised me to find a place for you. I suspect, however, that in accepting you, my superiors are, well, are acting on some perverse sense of nostalgia. Well, that's the only reason you're here. If it were up to me, you wouldn't be. I really don't know what you mean. You know exactly what I mean. I still can't seem to forget about a certain fellowship that was supposed to be mine. Well, the committee seemed to have thought otherwise. Yeah, after a little monetary persuasion from you. Whitney, you've always been such a sore loser. Get out of here before I really lose my temper. What the hell is she doing here? The board of directors fell in love with her. We'll have to do something about that, won't we? You bet. After being repeatedly told the only rule is don't go in the basement, she immediately goes into the basement and turns it into a studio for her comic books. She finds the satanic book and immediately starts drawing comics of the creature from the book killing her rival. It's part werewolf and vampire, demon and ghost. It will tear your throat open, then drink your blood and feast on your still warm brains. That's sick. It's terrifying, but it's going to make a terrific comic book. In fact, I'm certain this is what Childress was working on when he died. Now, I am certain that the Throckmorton Institute for the Arts has no place for an untalented act like this. Now we get into our more uh, gruesome special effects. The monster gains the ability to poof into existence comics of itself killing people. Because it can't kill anyone, it's not drawn killing. Who will win the battle between the artist and the monster? Who will draw the death of the other first? 
The special effects on this movie were done by a small company called Makeup and Mechanical Imageries. They were the first job of Howard Berger, who is now the B in K&B effects and does the special effects for The Walking Dead. The guy who wore the monster suit and did most of the effects for this movie worked for k &B for over 50 movies. So, yeah, there's a lot of good people involved in the special effects of this. Uh, several people from this went on to work for k &B on Transformers and Lion Witch and Wardrobe and tons of major movies. So, well, this is a wannabe cult classic, there's actually some good people involved. The rest of the cast is also TV actors. Yvonne DiCarlo from The Munsters, Brian Robbins from Head of the Class, Pamela Bellwood from Dynasty, and Miranda Wilson from Santa Barbara. It's directed by John Carl Butchler, who is a special effects artist. Overall, it does take a little bit to get going, but there's enough weirdness to keep you interesting when things start up. The special effects are a mix of gruesome and goofy. The acting is TV quality, but it's okay. It fits the movie pretty well, and I enjoyed watching it. Uh, the battle at the end ends up being pretty good. You wonder who's going to win. And, uh, yeah, ends up having a decent ending. Decent enough uh, acting for the to fit the movie anyways. And the facts are pretty cool at points. So overall, I enjoyed it. Overall, okay, it does take a little bit for things to get going, but once they get going, it's a pretty constant action. Uh, the special effects are a good mix of goofy and gruesome mixed in. The acting, well, TV quality fits the movie pretty well, and I did enjoy it. It kept me interested, and the ending is climatic and you're a big battle to the end to see who's going to win with their... Magical drawing powers. Uh, I enjoyed this one. Check it out. This movie gets six Captain Power and the Soldiers of the Future comic books out of ten. For decent enough action and effects and acting and theme that really fit the movie. If you want to see my review of that comic book, link in the description. Thank you for watching and as always... I shall try to do better next time. Here is one last scene from the movie. is sad.